We can look into the past and we can see that Earth has undergone these tipping points before. We're seeing faster rates of climate change, more disturbance of the land, higher rates of extinction. So I think it's pretty clear that we're headed for something big. We're at a point in humanity's history when we need to plan for the future, to plan for the long term, and drive the planet in directions that we want it to go, rather than just using uh, what we want left and right and um, just assuming everything's going to come out all right. We're past that point. Uh, what, we, what we do has consequences, and by understanding those consequences and the science behind it, we can actually formulate policies and formulate plans that help us keep our quality of life as good as it is today um, for our kids and grandkids. We've got seven billion people on the planet now. Um, by the year 2045, we're going to have at least nine billion people on the planet. Uh, that's going to put additional stresses on um, how we produce and distribute energy, how we produce and distribute food, um, how we invest or uh, use up natural resources. And now think of glaciers uh, melting due to climate change and much of the world who, that relies on fresh water from those glaciers no longer having a fresh water supply. Um, think of the wheat, wheat belt in uh, the central United States shifting north into Canada. Um, all of a sudden, what we have depended upon for our economic prosperity suddenly is either no longer there or in, on somebody else's land. These are the things that lead to economic unrest, political unrest, uh, and in general, a people for humanity. Once people realize that there's a big global important issue, we tend to be pretty clever about solving it. Um, so, you know, that's my hope for the future, that we realize where we are, uh, that we're standing at the crossroads, and that we mobilize and do the right thing.